Howdy, in this video what I want to do is I want to introduce um, 1D kinematics but now moving in the Y direction, okay? So hopefully we had a decent foundation with the X direction because now we're going to build on that foundation and talk about how to deal with uh, projectile motion but solely going in one direction and in this case the Y, okay? So taking a look at this example, it says that a student drops a 5 kilogram book from the top of Auburn Tower which we'll call it 42, which we'll say is 42 meters tall. Part A, how long does it take for the book to hit the ground? Part B, does the mass of the book affect the fall time? And then part C, what is the velocity of the book as it hits the ground? One thing I want to talk about before I even mention stuff that deals solely with the Y direction is your axis and where you decide to set your X knot and Y knot and how you decide to set your positive orientation. What I'm gonna do in this problem is I'm gonna call where the book starts. So here's all Britain Tower, here's the floor. I'm going to start right here. I'm gonna call this y equals zero. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that the positive y direction, the positive y direction is downward, okay? Now you can set y equals zero here and set the positive y up, that's okay. But what, I'm, what I want to mention is, as long as your, your um, math stays consistent with your frame of reference that you set up, it'll always work out, okay? I don't care how you set up your axes. As long as your mathematics stays consistent with it, that's all that matters. That's why, in this case, for this problem, I'm going to let y not be 0. It says that it's dropped. And so V naught in the Y direction is zero. And your acceleration, the magnitude of acceleration on Earth will always be 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, I will nev you'll never hear me say that gravity is negative 9.8. No, the magnitude of it's 9.8. Because what makes it negative? What makes it negative is if I set the positive y-axis to be up, then yes, because acceleration's pointed downwards, yes, in this situation, in this frame of reference, your a would be negative. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the downward motion to be positive. And in this case, my acceleration is pointed in the positive direction of the axis that I decided to set. The reason I love doing uh, setting it up like this, especially with other problems you'll see why later, is because sometimes mathematically, if you're only moving in the y direction, if you're only, or sorry, if you're only moving downward, it might be advantageous mathematically to keep, or to make your positive y axis down. That way, ever, all motion is all positive, okay? It's whatever you prefer, but I'm just going to do this problem like this, that way you can kind of see how that works. Okay, anyways, but we're still going to attack this exactly the same. What I'm going to do is I'm still going to set up my two equations. Remember how I talked about x is just position, it can be interchanged with a y, and it's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to set up my two equations and say that yf is equal to y0, which is 0, plus v naught t, which is 0, plus one half a t squared, and so it's 4.9 t squared. And as for vf, vf is equal to v naught, which is zero, plus a t, plus 9.8 t. And now that I have these two equations set up, now let's answer the question, figure out what they want. Part a, how long does it take, so t is what I'm looking for, for the book to hit the ground? What I want is I want my yf to be 42, right? Because if this is y equals 0, remember this is y equals 0, and my positive y is down, this will be y equals 42. So, all you got to do, 42 is equal to my 4.9 t squared, and so now let's just do a little bit of algebra to solve for that. So divided by 4.9, 42 divided by 4.9, is, we'll call it 8.57. 8.57 is equal to t squared. And when I take the square root of each side, you get 2.93. We'll 
And so for part A, it takes 2.93 seconds for it to hit the ground. Part B, does the mass of the book affect the fall time? Part B, the answer is no. Because what if I said this was a 10,000 kilogram book? My equation wouldn't have changed, okay? Now, this is all assuming that we live in a vacuum, okay? I know that if I dropped a hammer and if I dropped a feather, um, they would hit at different times. The mass would take it, would be, <laughs> the mass would, you would think the mass would make a difference, but it doesn't. It was actually air resistance that causes the feather to fall to the ground, well, slower. There's this really cool video, I'll see if I can find it and attach it to the link, but there's a really cool video in the world's largest vacuum where they literally dropped a bowling ball and a feather. Um, they dropped it from like 100 feet or something, and they literally fell at the exact same rate, landed at the exact same time. It was really, really cool stuff. The whole point of that, um, whole point of that is that mass in this physics class has no effect on the fall time. As you get to more advanced phys uh, physics classes, like modern physics or something like that, um, you start learning differential equations, then you'll start taking air resistance into account. But that's still a couple semesters or a couple years from now. So we'll worry about that then. Till then, in this course, no, the mass of the book does not affect the fall time. Finally, for part C, what is the velocity of the book as it hits the ground? So for part C, what is the velocity of the book when it hits the ground? And when does it hit the ground? Well, 2.93 seconds later, right? And so, all we gotta do is plug, plug 2.93 into our velocity equation. So this is 9.8 times 2.93. And so, taking what we just found here and multiplying that by 9.8, what we get is 28.69, 28.69 meters per second. Cool. So this is just the introduction. Um, there's one more type of problem that I want to do that's introductory. Then what we'll do is we'll get into a really difficult one. We'll get into one that takes a lot of things into account. So join me in the next, actually it's going to be what I want to do, actually, instead, is let's do one more more introductory, then we'll get to 2D kinematics, and that's where we're just going to throw everything um, at you all at the same time. So, join me. i got one more um, kinematics problems in the Y direction.